So much since I've been here. Oh yeah, you're right. Because the computer yeah. stuff used to be over there, right? Used to be over there. Uh, Your office is really cool. And all the videos, I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> Thank you. You ready to see the computer? Yes. Here it is. Hey, what's up, everyone? Danny here. A little while back, one of my best friends, Jan, and his girlfriend, Meg, approached me asking if I could help build Meg a gaming PC. Up to this point, she has never had a gaming system. She's gamed on a laptop before, uh, but nothing major, mostly things like indie titles and lighter games like The Sims uh, that would run on just about anything. Uh, so this would actually be her first proper gaming rig. Meg is a very artistic person and is into drawing, crafts, cosplay, things like that. So she's going to use this computer for more than just gaming. She actually wants to start live streaming while she does her artsy stuff. I'm always happy to help friends and family build computers, so I gladly accepted. Uh, so yeah, let's check out what I was able to put together for her. The budget Meg had for this build was $800. That's a decent chunk of money that can get a pretty nice gaming PC. And whenever friends or family ask for my help for anything computer related, I treat their money as if it were my own and try to get as much value out of every dollar possible. The only issue is that when they approached me to ask for my help, uh, it was around the April timeframe, so the pandemic was going on. I mean, we still kind of have it going on right now in June, but it was worse in March and April with regards to product availability. Not everything was bad though, like the RAM, SSDs, cases, those were pretty much unaffected and I knew I could get those off of Amazon and Newegg anytime I wanted. Uh, the trouble was with the core components, you know, the CPU, uh, motherboard, graphics card, and power supplies. Uh, and don't even get me started on power supplies there was like a span of time where uh, I could not find a decently tiered power supply for under $100 power supply after power supply being posted were in the $100 plus dollar range and on the rare occurrences where something reasonably less than that was posted it went out of stock almost instantly so initially finding parts was a bit of a challenge I spent a good month or so searching and hoping for online prices to go back to normal uh, but that never happened then one day as I was looking on offer up I came across a listing that was pretty much a miracle and saved the day. It was for a processor but the seller also had other items listed and ended up offering them all to me for a combo discount so let's go through them right now. The processor he had for sale, the one that caught my eye and turned out to be a blessing in disguise was the Ryzen 7 1700 with the stock Wraith Spire RGB cooler. It was originally listed for $120 which is a great price for it because it's still a very relevant processor right now over 3 years since its initial release. 8 cores and 16 threads will be plenty capable for any of the games that Meg wants to play and will easily allow her to stream her arts and crafts. If she ever does feel the need to upgrade, you know, being on the AM4 socket, she'll have a good amount of options down the line with a later gen Ryzen chip. Part of the combo that the seller had listed was an Asus Strix GTX 1070. This was coincidentally the exact same card I had in mind before I even came across this ad, and I had already been searching on eBay and Hardware Swap for one without much luck, so it was a perfect coincidence that he was also selling one. I absolutely love this card, and I recommend it a lot. I've had one in my personal system uh, for a few years, and it's still very relevant despite being 4 years old as of making this video. In terms of performance, compared to a current gen card this is pretty much on par with a GTX 1660 Ti uh, which is typically priced close to $300 brand new uh, so finding one of these in the used market can save you quite a bit of money if the price is right. The RAM in the combo is 16GB of G-Skill Trident Z RGB at 3GHz. RAM is actually very readily available online and priced very well even brand new, uh, but I wasn't going to pass up on a combo discount if it was being offered to me. I absolutely love the look of these, and this is actually my first time ever using the Trident Z RGB because uh, they're typically the most expensive of all the different models and brands out there, so I'm glad I was able to snag these and spice up the aesthetics of Meg's build. The power supply in this build is going to be the EVGA Supernova G3. This was also part of the combo and it's fully modular and has all black cables. So it's great for cable management and looks nice, but superficial things aside, it's 80 plus gold rated and is a high quality unit that had received high scores and praise from the professional testers like Johnny Guru, Overclockers.com, Tom's Hardware, and pretty much every single review I could find on it. If you're familiar with the power supply tier list from Linus's forums, the Supernova G3 series is ranked as a tier A. This was definitely a lucky find since power supply prices, especially high quality ones, are easily over $100 right now, brand new, and there's not much of them in the used market. 
The last piece of the bundle is this case, the Fantex Eclipse P400. This is a pretty standard mid-tower box case with tempered glass, and this is the version with the mostly closed off front panel. Uh, it's got your standard power supply basement, grommeted cable management holes, designated Velcro tie-offs in the back to keep things tidy, and 12 volt non-addressable RGB strips that can be controlled by buttons on the case. Overall, it's a good case if you aren't doing any crazy overclocking that would warrant a front mesh for more airflow, and it's really hard not to use it when he threw it into the bundle for only $30. So the combo ended up being $450, which prices out to roughly uh, what's shown right here on the screen. And after I secured those parts, I quickly jumped on Amazon to finish off the build. The motherboard I chose was the ASRock B450M Pro 4. In terms of the B450 chipsets, my go-to motherboards, assuming that they're in stock, are the ASRock Pro 4 and MSI Tomahawk. Both of these have really good VRMs and overclocking potential for their respective prices, and had the Tomahawk been in stock, I would have used it, uh, but those are so popular that they are rarely in stock, so I opted for the Pro 4. And if you're wondering why I'm using a micro ATX board in a mid tower, it's because the ATX version of this is also very popular and is constantly sold out, so I grabbed the micro form factor. Don't worry though, it still looks completely fine when used in a mid tower. For storage, I'm starting Meg off with a 500GB NVMe drive, the Western Digital Blue SN550. This is a budget NVMe drive that's DRAM-less, but it's priced pretty well at only $65 before tax and it's pretty readily available. Had I gone with the SATA drive, I would have made sure that it had DRAM, uh, but for NVMe drives, it's not as big of an issue. Here are some posts from Numax, a very well-known SSD expert in the hardware community, regarding DRAM-less NVMe drives and the SN550 specifically, which he actually recommends. If the price is the same between one with and without one, definitely grab the one with DRAM. Uh, but if inventory is an issue or if there's a big enough price difference, then the SN550 is a very viable option. Now let's take a look at the price breakdown of what I paid for the system. The grand total came in just over $600, which I'm pretty proud of considering what's in the build. Now remember, Meg originally had $800 to work with. Even though there was still room left in the budget, I know the system is going to be plenty capable for her needs, so that's why I didn't automatically just spend the rest of it. If I could deliver a system that she would thoroughly enjoy and save her money, uh, then that's what I was going to do because that means the remainder could be put towards things like peripherals, games, uh, or just save for future use and emergencies. Uh, just because you have extra money to spend, it doesn't mean that you just should. Uh, I know it's kind of an odd concept, but I don't think a lot of people realize this. Now I do understand that not everyone's going to be able to find great deals like I did for a system like this. Uh, good deals because of their nature are often picked up very quickly and there is usually more demand for great PC deals than there are people supplying them. So if you're looking for a system that's a similar caliber to this, I've compiled a list of prices that should be very accessible to anyone to put together a similar build and still have great price to performance. Originally, Meg wanted a pink case and a pink themed build, uh, but choices were super limited due to the pandemic, and the only one that we could actually find was an Apivia one from Amazon. After getting it though, I saw that the fans were basically put up against the glass and there was like zero airflow, and the build quality was just pretty bad. The case just looked and felt super cheap in person, and it definitely wasn't worth it, so I ended up returning it. Uh, luckily though, a lot of the components from the combo deal ended up having RGB capabilities, uh, so I still was able to incorporate pink into her build. Uh, but yeah, here it is, her system completed and ready to go. Ooh, oh. it's so pretty! <laughs> oh, that's such a nice case. It is. That looks so cool. I don't, I'm just like, I'm still new to like computers, but I'm just like, oh, that looks sick. Have you had a Michael. computer before, like ever? Oh, wait, just a laptop. But now since I have like an iPad Pro, Procreate's like my best friend, but like I haven't been able to like game on like a laptop as much as I want to because like the lag. I'm actually gonna stay up late tonight. I'm like <laughs> usually going to bed at like 9.30 p.m. Okay, so let's look at the performance real quick. It just looks so cool. I can't stop staring at it. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you like the aesthetic. I do. Sometimes I, especially when I build cheaper systems, I don't focus on aesthetics. I'm glad you like it. Though. No, I do. Yeah, no, it's like, <laughs> and then you can change colors too for whatever mood you're feeling. Now it's time to see what this build is capable of. For overclocking, I had the Ryzen 7 1700 running at 3.6 GHz on all cores. The Trident ZRAM is running at the rated 3 GHz, and the GTX 1070 is running at an additional 200 MHz on the core and 500 MHz on the memory. 
All titles will run at both 1080 and 1440p as those would be the intended resolutions for a system like this. Uh, so yeah, sit back, relax, and enjoy the benchmarks. And there you have it, those were the results. Uh, I think this system performs exceptionally well for how much it costs at the end. Uh, the core parts driving most of the performance, which would be the CPU and GPU, uh, those are three to four years old by this point and they're holding up very well today as you just saw. Uh, so if you can find them in the used market, you can get some pretty awesome performance that can keep up with modern components that cost more than them. Um, not only that though, but this build has a ton of potential when it comes to upgrade path. You know, Meg won't be needing that for a while, but it'll be there for her when the time comes. But yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this video though. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you found it useful or entertaining or even both. Uh, let me know down in the comments below what you would spend for a computer like this. Like, uh, would you spend 600 for it? And what would your maximum be since uh, I got pretty good deals, but it's not always gonna be that cheap. Like how much would you be willing to spend for it? Um, but yeah, I wanna thank you as always for watching and for your continued support of the channel. This is like one of my favorite things ever uh, to do to help people with their very first systems and introduce them to the world of custom built computers. It's been a passion of mine for many years and I'm super thankful that I not only get to do it uh, but I also get to share it with you all. Um, Meg is loving her PC so I would say it's mission accomplished uh, but yeah I will see you all down in the comments as well as in the next video. Bye. Also I'm not sure if you noticed but I had three cameras on this entire time. Oh. <laughs>